obviously you're talking about your electoral chances that's part of this day the polls aren't looking good could be a humiliating defeat I know you're not someone that sugarcoats things can you just tell us a bit about the mood upstairs as you were looking at all this well earlier this year I set out this government's priorities for the country five priorities to halve inflation grow the economy reduce debt cut waiting lists and stop the boats we are relentlessly focused on delivering those because if we do that we can provide peace of mind for people that immediate relief for families but also the fact that they can look forward to a better future for their children and their grandchildren a future that's filled with hope optimism and pride in our country someone who's here today is Nadim Zahawi do you have confidence in him when it comes to Nadim Zahawi or anyone else, what I believe in is due process and that's why I appointed an independent advisor to look into the questions that have been raised, investigate the situation fully, establish the facts and provide advice to me on Nadim Zahawi's compliance with the ministerial code. I think that's the right thing to do to ensure that we have integrity in politics, but to do that in a professional way, that's what we're doing. Okay, so you want to establish the facts. Yesterday you said there were no issues raised when he was appointed, more information has come to light since. Can we just have some exact clarity on that? When were you aware that this HMRC settlement was reached? Well, I addressed this in Parliament in detail this week. It, because new information came to light over the past week, that's why I asked the government's independent and that advisor. Was about the settlement, that, and that was why they, they said more new information came to light over the past week, and that's why I decided to uh, ask the independent advisor to fully investigate this matter, establish the facts, and provide advice to me about Nadim Zahawi's compliance with the ministerial code. But when I appointed Nadim Zahawi to his current job, no issues were raised with me about that appointment. I understand that you, the independent advisor is looking at this, but this obviously isn't just about Nadine Zahawi, it's about you and your judgment and what you knew and when. So when you say new information, can you just tell us exactly what you mean that's come to light in the last week? Is that about the settlement? Well, when I appointed Nadine Zahawi to his current job, no issues were raised with me about that appointment. It's really important to say. But because Nadim Zahawi himself put a statement into the public domain and there was other reporting, there are questions to answer and that's why I asked the independent advisor to conduct an investigation to fully establish the facts and provide advice to me about Nadim Zahawi's compliance with the ministerial code. I believe we should have integrity in politics and we should do that in a professional way where we have an independent person look at all the facts and provide advice. That's the long established process that we have and that's the process that I'm following. The boss of HMRC today said there are no penalties for innocent errors. So this wasn't an innocent error involving millions of pounds. Is that not enough to sack him? Uh, again, I'm not going to prejudge the outcome of the investigation. It's important that the independent advisor is able to do his work. That's what he's currently doing. That's what I've asked him to do. And I'll await the findings of that investigation. A lot of these stories have links to Boris Johnson, these stories that you're under pressure over. Do you think that he has questions to answer? But what I'm focused on is delivering on the priorities that I set out for the country, and that's to halve inflation, grow the economy, reduce debt, cut waiting lists, and stop the boats. I'm entirely focused on doing that for this country. That's what my cabinet is united in delivering. That's what we're here discussing today, because what we want to do is provide relief for families up and down the country, and we want to give them the peace of mind that their children and grandchildren can look forward to a better future, a future that's filled with hope, optimism, and pride, that's what I'm set out to deliver. And can I ask quickly about Dominic Raab? How many complaints are being looked at involving the Deputy Prime Minister? Because reports today it's more than 24 complaints. Well, I appointed an independent investigator to have a look at that matter. I wait for that independent investigator to complete their uh, investigation and report back to me. But in the meantime, what I'm doing is focused on delivering on the five priorities that I set out for the country. And that is to halve inflation, grow the economy, reduce debt, cut waiting lists and stop the boats. That's what the cabinet is united in delivering. That's what we're discussing today. We want to provide relief for families up and down the country, but also peace of mind that their children and grandchildren can look forward to a better future. Yeah. On sending tanks to Ukraine, why is it taking so long? Germany said April the latest. There's no clarity from the Americans and tanks will need air cover. There's still no word on that. Why 
is it all taking so long and is it too late? I think when it comes to the question of tanks, everyone should feel very proud of the leadership role that we here in the United Kingdom have played, one of the early nations to provide tanks to Ukraine. Uh, as ever in this conflict, we have tried to make sure that we can provide as much support to Ukraine as possible. We've demonstrated that again by providing our Challenger tanks uh, before others. Uh, we are now in, in dialogue with the Ukrainians about how best to provide those tanks, make sure that their troops get the training that they need on the 